With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, hour one. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The Eric Erickson Show across the nation. I sure hope you're doing great today. My goodness gracious, yes, you know what we're going to spend time on out of the gate. It literally is the biggest news story of the day for a variety of reasons. And I want you to hear it for yourself before I even dive in and, and really tell you what I think about it. You, you do need to understand what is about to happen to John Fetterman in Pennsylvania. It's just not good. But first... I want you to hear it for yourself. This is actually how I'm not making this up. You hear it for yourself. This is how the debate began last night in Pennsylvania. As Lieutenant Governor, you're running for a seat that could decide the balance of power in Washington. What qualifies you to be a U.S. Senator? You have 60 seconds. Hi, good night, everybody. Hi, good night, everybody. The consequences of his stroke are not good. I don't mean to make light of it, don't mean to laugh about it, but for months his team has denied he was as bad as he is. Remember, Dasha Burns is the NBC News reporter who interviewed John Fetterman for his first in-person interview. Dasha Burns was assailed by members of the press for saying that he was not good, Fetterman was not good with small talk before and that he had to read off a teleprompter. Uh, Kara Swisher from, used to be at, in, uh, at Wall Street Journal and then at Vox for a while. She's gone on doing something else. Uh, she said maybe the reporter is not very good at small talk. Uh, a New Yorker reporter savaged Dasha Burns saying, I've spent time with him. Now, they were apparently in remote interviews, though, not in person. The Associated Press ran an interview, ran an attack on Dasha Burns of NBC News for suggesting there was something wrong with John Fetterman. She's owed an apology. I want to play you a rather long clip. It's, it's just over two minutes, but there's a reason that I need to play this for you because I don't want to be accused of taking any of this out of context. An NBC News reporter accused uh, Greg Price, who's a conservative activist, of putting together a montage of John Fetterman being taken out of context. And Greg Price put up the clips. They were all pretty bad, but the reporter from NBC News doubled down and said, no, 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 you can't do this. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to play you the clip of John Fetterman. This is an exchange between John Fetterman and Dr. Oz. Uh, it, it, it's it's kind of lengthy. But I need you to hear the full exchange. This is a extreme position on this energy. is Dr. Oz if we talking now. Our energy here in Pennsylvania, it would help everybody. Why John Fetterman is so rigidly stuck on fighting against uh, energy companies is, stu is stunning to me because it's the jobs I want. Tens of thousands of high-paying jobs to help Pennsylvanians. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Oz. Uh, Oz rule. Mr. Fetterman, you know, 15 I seconds. absolutely support fracking. In fact, I live across the street from a, the, a steel mill, and they were going to frack to create their own energy in order to make them more competitive, and I support that living closer to anybody else in Pennsylvania for fracking to myself. I believe that we need independence with energy, and I believe I've walked that line my entire career. I believe Democrats... Mr. Mr. Fetterman, I do have a specific question, which you can continue on this topic, but you have made two conflicting statements regarding fracking. In a 2018 interview, you said, quote, I don't support fracking at all. I never have. But earlier this month, you told an interviewer, quote, I support fracking. I support the energy independence that we should have here in the United States. So, Mr. Fetterman, please explain your changing position. 60 seconds. Uh, 
uh, I've, I've always supported fracking, and I always believe that independence with our energy is, is critical, and we can't be held, you know, uh, you know, ransom to somebody like Russia. You know, I've always believed that energy independence is critical, and I've always believed that, and I do support fracking. I've never taken any money from their, their, their industry, but I support how critical it is that we produce our own energy and create energy independence. I must correct the uh, record. We'll he have just a second, Mr. Oz. I do want to clarify something. You're saying tonight that you support fracking, that you've always supported fracking, but there is that 2018 interview that you said, quote, I don't support fracking at all. So how do you square the two? Uh, I, I, I do support fracking, and I don't, I don't, I support fracking, and I stand, and I do support fracking. One more. In an op-ed for the Wilkes-Barre Times leader, you wrote, quote, it is time we crack down on the big price gouging corporations that are making record profits while jacking up prices for all of us. How do you plan to do this, sir? You mentioned price going after price gouging corporations. How do you plan to do this? You have 30 seconds. Yeah, exactly. We have to keep pushing back on that. And he would never make that choice to, to fight for, uh, for, for uh, Amer families here in Pennsylvania. You know, he has never met an, air, uh, uh, an oil company that he doesn't swipe right about. You know, he has never been able to stand up for working families all across Pennsylvania. You know, we must push back. Inflation has hurt Americans and Pennsylvania's families, and it has given the oil companies record profits. All right. Thank you, Mr. Y'all, there's clearly a problem with John Fetterman's ability to process words. He had to read from the teleprompter again last night to answer the questions. Um, it's just there's something off there. To small business owners who have told us that if the minimum wage were increased to $15 an hour, it would put them out of business. You have 30 seconds. No, we, we all have to make sure that everyone that works is able to, that's, that's the most American bargain, that if you work full time, you should be able to live in dignity as well, true. And I believe they haven't had have any businesses being, being uh, we can't have businesses being subsidized by not paying ind uh, individuals that just simply can't evade to, to pay their own way. Okay, Mr. All right, over to you, Bob Casey, the senator from Pennsylvania. I think that message came through very clearly. I think his answers were, were very direct. I think there's some real question on the other side about a number of answers where there didn't seem to be a yes or no. But I think John did very well, and I think he, he understands uh, how people struggle. He understands what working families are up against every day, and I think that came, came through throughout the debate. I did it, though did it. Uh, here is Michael Smirkanish and Brianna Keeler this morning on CNBC or CNN. This is what people in Pennsylvania watching CNN woke up to this commentary. Look, I think it's really tricky how we talk about this debate. Maybe he meant good evening and he said good night because it was an expressive communication issue. But at the same time, Michael, one of the things that strikes me is this was the first time where we all really got to see for ourselves how John Fetterman is doing, right? There have been uh, moments where he's had these interviews, but they have been tightly controlled. We've seen the letter from his, I think it's his GP, who's, who's talked to his other specialists, but the letter's not from his specialist. We haven't seen the medical records. I guess my point is just, we didn't know what we were really going to get until last night. And I think it was different than what some people were expecting. It's difficult to discuss, you know, to even have this, I think, objective conversation is to be accused of ableism. I don't think that's what it is. I think that had John Fetterman be more, been more forthcoming from the get-go, A, about the timing of the stroke, because there was a 48 or so hour time period, and it was the final weekend of the primary where he didn't let us know that he'd had a stroke. The underlying cardiomyopathy and the need for a defibrillator was not revealed. The medical records have not been produced. I mean, I could go on and on and on. He's not been transparent. He's been opaque. His answer last night was to say, well, take a look at me. Okay, well, we took a look, and our heart breaks for you, 
but we're not comfortable, I think is going to be the consensus. You think here's Joe Scarborough on Morning Joe this morning. You know, it's very interesting. Last night I wrote something that that was was very obvious. Um, Dr. Oz uh, is a very slick uh, guy who doesn't happen to fit Pennsylvania. He made some statements that I know uh, uh, caused great concerns to people in Pennsylvania, especially where, uh, in the words of Charlie Pierce, he wanted the parks and recreation people to make decisions on the local level for abortions. I don't know how that's going to play uh, in Scranton, probably not well. Uh, and then you had, of course, Fetterman, who's who's struggling. Uh, he's, he's struggling with the effects of a stroke that uh, he suffered in May. Um, and, you know, I said, it's, it's very obvious that he is impaired. His ability to communicate is impaired. Uh, and, and the question is, uh, you, you, you now Pennsylvania voters have a couple of choices. <laughs> they have a couple of choices to make. Early voting's been going on for four weeks in Pennsylvania already. Or Pennsylvania's one of the earliest voting periods in the nation. And uh, now a lot of voters, I suspect, are going to feel like they've been duped. Here's the problem for John Fetterman. This is a real problem for John Fetterman and his campaign. Since May, when he had his stroke, the national political press have largely carried water for John Fetterman. They have bought his statements and his campaign and wife statements that he was recovered, that it wasn't that bad, that it wasn't a big deal that uh, there was no disability, they they bought all of those statements. Not only do they buy those statements, but when a reporter for a mainstream media outlet, Dasha Burns, pointed out that he can barely handle small talk, reporters, not partisans, but reporters, and I realize we know they're partisans, but bear with me here, p- reporters piled on and attacked her and said maybe the problem was her, not him. The American political press leans to the left editorially. It just does. But they work very hard to make it seem like they do not. They have carried this man's water since May. They now have to turn on him because all of us have now seen just how bad the situation is. All of us have heard the problem for ourselves. We see the extent of it. Joe Scarborough on Morning Joe saying he clearly has a problem, and the voters in Pennsylvania will talk about it even if the media does not. Axios, which tried to pivot immediately to Dr. Oz making a statement on abortion that suggested local officials needed a say in a woman's abortion, uh, has now turned on Fetterman and highlighting his statements, complete with ellipses and dashes and ums and stutters to get the point in the transcript that he's not very coherent. CNN has done the same thing. MSNBC talking about it. Major media outlets now doing this because they realize a couple of things. The momentum is shifting pretty significantly. Across the nation, there is a Republican wave coming. There is no corresponding Democratic wave that we can detect in any public polling or private polling. And we know about the private polling because the Democrats would be bragging about it if they saw it. So the Senate is probably lost for the Democrats, so now the media needs to keep its integrity. The media needs you and me to buy into the idea that they are somehow still objective. And the way to do that now is to ask the probing questions about John Fetterman that for months on end, the American media refused to ask, where are his medical records? Where are the experts? Where are the surgeons? Why take a letter from his GP and not talk to the specialists? His campaign has covered it up. The media has helped. The media is now exposed to the vulnerability. They must now turn on John Fetterman to save their own reputation. This is a real problem for Fetterman. And for the Democrats in a 50-50 Senate fight, I want to tell you guys a little about a group I've been working with, Americans for Prosperity. Maybe you've heard of them. They're the largest grassroots network in the country fighting to expand freedom and opportunity so that we can unleash prosperity in America again. 
Here's what I like about Americans for Prosperity. They focus on building movements at the community level, not Washington, D.C. That's actually how I first came to know them, in Georgia, helping rise up the Tea Party movement in 2010. They understand we're not going to find solutions in Washington. we got to take power out of Washington. That's going to have to come from Americans like you outside the Beltway bubble. That's why I'm excited to partner with Americans for Prosperity to provide an effective platform where we can talk to our fellow Americans and advocate for solutions to the most critical challenges facing the country. I encourage you to learn more about Americans for Prosperity by going to americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number, should you wish to be a part of this here program, 877-973-7425. I got to mention the bourbon event on Friday. I still hope you'll get a ticket and come because on the third hour today, I have some of the latest numbers on early voting in Georgia and nationally, giving Democrats heartburns, particularly in Georgia. But, uh, and Marco Rubio, by the way, is going to join me in the third hour. But by Friday evening, we will have a good sense of the way things are playing out with early voting. Um, And we should know whether or not there's going to be a runoff or an outright win by Walker. And if you're there, I'm going to try to talk to you about the early voting uh, patterns we're seeing objectively as possible, give you some detailed analysis. But you got to have a ticket to come. VIPs get in at 5 to shoot at the range, sample some bourbons. If you do the bourbons first, then you get a voucher for the gun range. If you just want to come to the event, you want to come hear the talk, you don't want the bourbon, don't want the guns, just come at 7 o'clock for the general admission ticket. Text the word bourbon to 33777. Would be delighted to have you there. Now, I got to play this clip from John Avalon on CNN. And this is important. This is very important. Tonight was debate night in America for at least a few final key races. You know what that means. There's going to be some reality checking to do. So let's start in Pennsylvania, where Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman took the stage against trump back TV doc Mehmet Oz. Now, Fetterman is, of course, recovering from a stroke and has done much of his campaigning via Twitter. So appearing in the debate was a risky and gutsy move for Fetterman, who could appear halting at times last night. But those stylistic issues have nothing to do with the substance of one flip-flopping statement he made. I've always supported fracking, and I always believe that independence with our energy is is critical. Now, it's fine for Fetterman to change his mind, but it is false to say that he has always supported fracking, as a moderator pointed out. Because as recently as 2018, Fetterman was saying the opposite, as first unearthed by CNN's K-File. I don't support fracking uh, at all, and I never have. Uh Uh-huh. See? They're turning on him. They, they're trying to, to give him a pass on the coverage, but they're turning on him. They're turning on him. That sort of stuff matters. Now, to the phones we go. Ron, you're going to be the first caller today. Welcome to the show, Ron. Hey, Eric. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, good wishes, well wishes to your wife and your family. Hope everybody's okay. What that Thank you. ask you, I was reading about uh, stroke victims and thinking about uh, Senator Fetter, or, uh, Mr. Fetterman in Pennsylvania. My simple question is, I wonder if he's able to operate a vehicle or if his rehabilitation uh, specialist, anybody has any information on that for him to be able to operate like a simple, you know, car or driving with his, uh, you know, the the limitations of what has happened with his uh, abilities after the stroke. Do you know anything about that at all? No. And it, look, this is one of those areas that hasn't been reported on. Uh, his wife, if you'll recall, last week was trying to get Dasha Burns at NBC fired for her handling. And by the way, Ron, I just learned something here. Uh, Those of you in Florida listening are going to love this. You know who John Fetterman's campaign manager is? Andrew Gillum's campaign manager. Andrew Gillum ran against Ron DeSantis. He was being investigated by the FBI. And then afterwards, it turned out that uh, though married with kids, he was also having a sexual relationship with a man and doing meth. And now the guy who ran that campaign, and I don't know that he even knew all that was going on, but uh, was that guy's campaign manager, a guy with deep behind-the-scenes troubles, is now John Fetterman's campaign manager. Now, I I don't know if if Fetterman is able to drive a car or anything. I don't know that the media is bothered to ask. I bet they're going to start asking these questions. I bet so. By the way, we've got new polls from Data for Progress, the Democratic polling firm. 
In Arizona, Mark Kelly and Blake Masters tied. In Florida, Rubio leading by seven. In Wisconsin, Ron Johnson leading by five. In Nevada, Adam Laxalt leading by one. And in New Hampshire, Senator Hassan running away with it. Republicans putting points on the board. When you're ready to hop into a soft, cozy bed, your sheets make a big difference. Bold and Branch sheets use only the best 100% organic cotton threads on earth for superior softness that only gets more luxurious with every wash. I know because I sleep in Bull and Brand sheets. And let me tell you, you know, they start off like your standard bed sheet, and you're thinking, what's the big deal? Well, wash them. You see the difference. Wash them again. You feel the difference more and more. They get softer over time, and they've got the perfect weight. They've got that weight in the summertime where you feel like substantively there's something on you, but yet you're not sweating to death. And in the wintertime, it's just the perfect snug fit for the Bull and Brand sheets. They focus on thread quality, not quantity, although the quality and the quantity both are fantastic. Now, they got over 25,000 Rave customer reviews made from the highest quality threads you can get. Bowl and Branch signature sheets come in nine colors. They fit all mattress sizes. You will feel the difference. And again, you got a 30-night risk-free trial with free shipping and returns. What do you have to lose? Try them. Keep washing them. They get softer and softer. Go to Bowl and Branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D branch.com. Use promo code ERIC. You'll get 20% off your first set of sheets and free shipping with the promo code ERIC, my name, at bowlandbranch.com. Again, B-O-L-L-A-N-D branch.com, the promo code ERIC, E-R-I-C-K. Hi there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. Marco Rubio joining me in the third hour of the program today to talk about his race down in Florida. The phone number here for you, 877-973-7425. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the other couple of debates out there that made headlines last night. You should know, by the way, CNN is having on as medical experts right now as I'm talking, suggesting that well, there is clearly something far worse wrong with John Fetterman than what his campaign led on. They're beginning to turn on him. There was also the Lee Zeldin, Kathy Huschel debate last night in New York. This has gotten a lot of buzz. Yeah, of course. I, and unfortunately, Kathy Huschel believes that the only crimes that are being committed are these crimes with guns. And you, you have people who are afraid of being pushed in front of oncoming subway cars. They're being stabbed, beaten to death on the street with hammers. Go talk to the Asian American community and how it's impact them with the loss of lives. Jewish people targeted with raw, violent anti-Semitism on our streets. It just happened yet again. We need to be talking about all of these other crimes, but instead, Kathy Hochul's too busy patting herself on the back. Job well done. No, actually, right now, there should be a special session. The state legislature legislature should come back and they should overhaul cashless bail and these other pro-criminal laws with zero tolerance. But they're saying, elect me. She says, elect me, and then you'll find out where maybe I'll stand on this issue in January. Yeah, of course. I, and unfortunately... Well, uh, I'm sorry. That clip cut off her. I got I to gotta find the... Um, I got to find her response. But while I'm finding her response, you also need to hear uh, Gretchen Whitmer. Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of... Michigan, you will recall, she shut down the whole state for months on end, including schools. She said this, and it is a flat-out lie. You know, Mrs. Dixon says that I kept students out longer than any other state. That's just not true. I worked closely with my Republican and Democratic governors, and kids were out for three months. That's not true. They were out far longer than that. How she doesn't know that the kids in her schools in Michigan were out for up to six months to a year is mind boggling to me, but that actually, that was actually the situation there. Uh, you also going back to Kathy, uh, in, um, brain fart, New York, governor of New York. Listen to this one. You've been an election denier a climate change denier, you and Donald Trump were the masterful COVID deniers. We are dealing with a real crisis. And the more people get vaccinated, get those shots in arms, and I would do it all over again what I did last year, that mandate for health care workers. Mandate for health care workers. Mandate for health care workers. She would fire everyone again for not getting a COVID vaccine that doesn't prevent the spread of COVID. Now, I got to play the clip again. 
it's Hukul, not Hushul, as I've been saying. Hukul, according to Lee Zeldin. Listen to this clip. Real briefly, please. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I stated that the first day that I'm in office, I'm going to declare a crime emergency and suspend Castle's bail and these other pro-criminal laws because there is a crime emergency. My opponent thinks that right now there's a polio emergency going on, but there's not a crime emergency different priorities that I'm hearing from people right now, they're not being represented from this, this governor, who still, to this moment, we're at, what, we're halfway through the debate, she still hasn't talked about locking up anyone committing any crimes. Okay. Anyone who commits a crime under our laws, especially with the change we made to bail, has consequences. I don't know why that's so important to you. All I know is that we could do more. Well, when I say we that could we do should more. remove... Excuse I'll... me, I'm speaking. Sure, go ahead. We could do so much more. If there was a nationwide ban, but certainly a state ban on teenagers being able to get guns, assault weapons. I mean, that's what happened in Buffalo. A teenager walked into a, a shop and was able to buy an assault weapon, the kind you use on military battlefields. It happened just yesterday in St. Louis. When are we going to start talking about the crimes that are the most frightening? And that's murders and shootings, which across this country are down about 2%. New York State, because he worked so hard on this since I became governor, they're down 14%. Down to roll back the tape, anyone who commits a crime under our laws, especially with the change made to bail, has consequences. I don't know why that's so important to you. There's a sound bite. Why is crime important to you? You know, she's done a series of crime events in New York. Uh, in New York City lately. The problem here is that it's too little too late. Now, this is a race where she's going to win unless there's a major Republican blowout. Kathy Hochul, the governor of New York, is going to win re-election unless there's a major, major Republican wave in excess of what we're seeing out there. But the fact that the race has now gotten closer than it should be has fallout consequences down the ballot to the state legislature in New York, and she's scrambling over this sort of stuff. Uh, these are not good signs for the Democrats nationwide. In the third hour, I want to show you, talk to you about some of the signs that are giving Democrats heartburn. we got a lot of other stuff to do before we get there and talk to Marco Rubio as well. Right now, I want to take phone calls, 877-973-7425. Barbara, you're going to be up next. Welcome to the show, Barbara. Hey, Eric. I'm praying for all of you, you and yours. <clears throat> Thank you. But I'm also praying for... America, because I'm really worried. Here we have two politicians who are obviously mentally impaired, whose families are letting them embarrass themselves in, in a way that is just so heartbreaking that I just, I just feel for them. I mean, the two men have families that are not watching out for them. How are we how are we moving forward if we're not taking care of our elderly in the way that we need to say, I know you want to do this, but you can't do this. You're not, you're not capable of doing this. Listen, I, 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 so I, this is, this is going to get me some hate mail, but I, I need to say this, Barbara, thank you for the phone call. This, this sets up perfectly. When I was in Washington, DC last week, multiple reporters from multiple major news organizations. Now, let me just give you the organizations that I met with reporters from. ABC, CBS, Axios, CNN, Fox News, The New York Times, The Washington Post, The Associated Press. Um, who else was there? Um, trying to go around the room. One, uh, Yahoo News, The Hill, um, Politico. They're, I'm missing a couple. But, I mean, the big, the big, uh, there was one from NBC News I talked to. I'll just say this is the caliber of the reporters I was talking to last week in Washington. A lot of them wanted to know my thoughts on the national politics, the GOP, Georgia. Multiple reporters from multiple ones of those outlets on their own, without my prodding, brought up Joe Biden and his decline. And everyone attributes it not to dementia, but to age, that he's hit the point where he's just really not firing on all cylinders. Multiple people who I met with, including some of the reporters, were very open that the word on the street is the New York Times is preparing after the election to throw Joe Biden under the bus with a big report. 
sourced with people inside the White House talking about Joe Biden's cognitive decline based on his age, his inability to lead, and how much more he knew about Hunter Biden than he's let on. Multiple people from multiple outlets open that this is this is the word on the street. They're waiting until after the election. They know it's going to be bad, and Biden is going to get thrown under the bus. We know Jill Biden pushed Joe Biden to run. We know Jill Biden pushed him for the student loan bailout. We know Jill Biden pushed him on the climate change bill as opposed to an inflation bill. We know Jill Biden behind the scenes has pushed her husband in certain directions beyond his capabilities at his age. It's very much like Woodrow Wilson's wife covering for him after his stroke when he was president of the United States. It turns out we now know Wilson was largely incapacitated after his stroke in a a pretty bad way, and his wife covered it up. His wife covered it up and largely ran his campaign, his White House, his administration. And now we have John Fetterman and his wife, who was an illegal alien, is an aggressive, progressive partisan who has tried to cost a reporter her job for accurately reporting what actually happened to John Fetterman and how bad off he was. Will Mrs. Fetterman apologize to Dasha Burns at NBC News? Clearly not. She should, but she won't. Will she apologize to Pennsylvania voters for lying about her husband's condition? Of course not. It's about the acquisition of power. Given all of the flattering profiles of Mrs. Fetterman in the last week or two, it's led a lot of people to speculate this is by design, that he'll get there, be unable to serve, and she'll get appointed in his place. That she is using him to get herself elected in ways she herself could not get herself elected. Both Mrs. Fetterman and Mrs. Biden are pushing their frail husbands to do things they should not do. Do you want to know a little bit of theological trivia? In Genesis 3, when God tells Eve her desire will be for her husband, It's one of the most misinterpreted lines in scripture. It does not actually mean that women will wish to be subservient to their husbands. It actually means that their desire will be to control their husband. And let's be honest, fellas, those of us who are married, you all know the secret to a great marriage is the two words, yes, dear. Men may biblically be the head of the household, but we're all scared of our wives. This is between us. Don't refer or mention this to my wife, but we all know it's true. We know that in Genesis 3, the desire of women for their husbands means that the desire will be to control them because you flip over a page and when God is talking to Cain after Cain murdering Abel, God tells Cain that sin's desire will be for him. It's the exact same phrase. It's the exact same word in Hebrew. Sin's desire will be to control Cain in the way a woman's desire will be to control her husband. A theological point that gets really missed by a lot of people who don't understand the original words and have twisted them in some some way in the 20th century to suggest that women desire under the the fall of man to be subservient to their husband, to be the housewife. That's not actually true at all. God's design is for women to be complementary to their husband, not to be equal with their husband. And women's desire is to be equal or above their husband. Here we have two women, Mrs. Fetterman and Mrs. Biden, who have pushed their husbands beyond their mental capabilities and physical capabilities to take positions and do things that we know in Joe Biden's case, he didn't really want to do the whole student loan bailout. 
And in Fetterman's case, we know his wife and campaign have rallied to advance him in a way that is beyond his capabilities. They lied, they distorted, they twisted, they attacked, they distracted, and now we've all seen it. We have all seen it. And in seeing it, we know we were lied to and we were played. We see this with Joe Biden on a daily basis, and the media still covers up for Joe Biden. The media still pretends in public that Joe Biden has no problems. It's just a speech impediment, a stuttering when behind the scenes they're pretty open that he has reached the point at which he's declining because of his age. None of them say dementia. All of them say it's because of his age. And now the rumor, the word on the street in Washington is the New York Times using White House staffers intend to highlight this after the election to push him to serve one term. This is very Wilson-esque from the early 20th century. What the media is going to have you do, the partisan press now, the objective press is going to throw Fetterman under the bus. They think the Senate's gone anyway. Might as well throw him under the bus to save his credibility. What the partisan press is going to do is try to get you what they do with Joe Biden. Don't believe your lying eyes. Believe their interpretation of what you've seen. And I don't think after that debate last night, anyone's going to fall for that. Now, before I get out of here, I got to tell you about Patriot Mobile because you should be using them as your cell phone provider. I got to tell you, I use them. I have two separate phones. One of them I keep with AT&T. One of them I keep with uh, with um, Patriot Mobile. It's nice to have a separate number that I can just give people my phone number to who I want to talk to them, but they don't need me immediately and I can check voicemails and stuff. And I can tell you, I go to parts of my state where I get coverage from Patriot Mobile that I don't get from my current provider. Why? Because they use the same cell towers everybody else uses, so you get guaranteed great service. You get 5G, you get voice, you get data, you get all of that. And on top of that, you get to make a difference in the political landscape of America because they take a portion of their profits and give it to the conservative movement. That's right. They're Christians and conservatives. They want to help the conservative movement grow, so that's how they were set up. They are set up to use the cell towers everybody else uses, give you guaranteed great service, take a portion of their profits, and give it to conservative causes you care about. You give your business to them, they give a portion of the money you pay them to the causes you care about. And you get great discounts, and you get free activation with my name. You go to patriotmobile.com slash eric. PatriotMobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K, or you call them 972-PATRIOT, 972-PATRIOT. You tell them I sent you. You get free activation. You get great discounts. They're worth doing business with. Text the word ERIC to 33777. Sign up for the daily email. You would have gotten all the data, particularly those of you in Georgia. Uh, If you text ERIC to 33777, click that top link. You'll be able to see Uh, those Georgia turnout numbers that are giving Democrats nationally some serious heartburn. Right now, let's see, do I have time? Yeah, I got about a minute and a half. Greg, welcome to the program. How are you? Hey, Eric, good to hear your voice as always. Uh, Looking forward to seeing you Friday night at Governor's Club. Excellent. That's my home range. My wife and I will be there to see you. Good. And my son trains for 4-H trap shooting on that indoor range. Oh, fantastic. Amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing it. It is great. It is great. Um, You know, the national media, the Democrats will need to have a pound of flesh, a sacrificial lamb to blame for this election. So who's it going to be? But then second part, who becomes their new champion? Because after they (laughs) throw somebody under the bus, somebody's got to take their place. Um, You know who I actually think is going to get the blame? Stacey Abrams. Uh, I I really actually do. Uh, And the reason I say that is because... So let me just cut to the chase, and and those of you who can't stick around for the third hour, I'll just give you the the nugget right here. Uh, The top performing counties in early voting in Georgia right now are Republican strongholds that never turn out for early voting. And the ones that are doing the worst are the top Democratic strongholds outside of Atlanta, including Clark County, the home of the University of Georgia. It is the third worst performing county in the state of Georgia for turnout, while Oconee County, the Republican bastion right next door to it, is one of the best performing. Stacey Abrams is going to get the blame. Uh, She's actually cut a million dollars a week of TV funding. She's pulled the money 
Uh, I am hearing rumors that Democrats are scrambling to get 15 passenger vans to the polls because the Abrams camp was going to take care of it, and now they're not. The Warnock campaign is fretful that they were relying too much on Stacey Abrams' ground game, and that may hurt him. Uh, She is going to be the fall guy for the Democrats nationally. They put her on a pedestal. They made her their hero. They all bought into her idea that the 2018 election was stolen and that voter suppression is real. And now her entire operation is collapsing before our eyes. She's going to be the fall guy. The Democrats are going to be like piranha on her as if she were trying to swim across the Amazon. They will devour her the day after the election. She will be the fall guy. When we come back, there's going to be another one, and I'll tell you who that is, too. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, lo. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW group. Void prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.